Hello everybody, my name is Mark Spevick and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a simple Hollywood style destruction effect using only the shelf tools in Houdini. So let's pop over into Houdini. Here we are inside Houdini and if I press play we can look at the assets that we have. One is a pre-animated car doing a spin through the air and the other is a wall asset that's been made of individual bricks. Now in order to uh, simulate these in Houdini and create the interaction that we're after, we need to use Houdini's rigid body system. The easiest way to access this is through the shelf tools at the top of the right hand side of the interface here. You'll find there is a rigid body shelf tab and uh, what rigid bodies are is um, it tells Houdini to allow things to be objects that are influenced by gravity and other forces in the scene. So to use this, and any of the shelf tools in fact, just left click in your viewport and make sure nothing is selected because otherwise when you use the shelf tool it will operate on your selection and that may or may not be what you want. So in this case I'm going to use RBD glue object which will tell Houdini that these bricks are individual objects but they'll start off glued together suggesting uh, the mortar between the bricks. So I'm going to left click on this shelf, shelf tab, click on the brick wall and hit enter. Now this will take us into the uh, dot network, don't worry about the shading for a minute, that will come back when we go up out of this context and if you tap L in this view, in the network view, it will lay out your nodes easier uh, and more nicely. Now if you press play, you'll notice that gravity now has its effect, our bricks are affected by forces and it drops off out of camera. The reason it does that is because there's no ground plane here, there's nothing for it to collide with, no floor. So I'd like to make a collider and that can, those can be found in the collision tab here and then we'll find the uh, shelf tools for the different colliders. And there is our ground plane. If I just left click on here, we'll create a ground plane. If I just hit escape to come out of um, back into camera mode. Now when I press play, we'll see the uh, wall doesn't drop off into gravity because it's been held up by the floor. So yep. Yeah. The next thing to do is to uh, tell Houdini to allow our car to collide with the wall. Now our car doesn't want to be a rigid body object because it doesn't want to be affected by physics but we want it to uh, still interact with our rigid body objects and for that we use this special shelf tool here called deforming object. This simply tells Houdini that this object is a collider but changes frame by frame. So again left clicking in your viewport here make sure nothing is selected. Click on deforming object, follow the prompt and select your deforming object in this case the car and hit enter. Now when you press play as before the car moves through the scene but this time when it hits the wall, it breaks those glue bonds and interacts with the wall. You see individual wicks flying off, but it's taking the wall with it. The reason for that is that the uh, wall itself is glued together, but it's not fixed to the floor. So it's just being placed there, it's resting on there under its own weight. So this is what happened, the wall gets carried away with the car. So to fix this, we need to uh, basically glue the wall to the floor. So to do that again, we can click on the rigid bodies tab for the rigid body tools and then we can go over to glue adjacent here on the far, far right. This will allow us to define objects that can be glued together. So again, making sure nothing is selected in your network view by left clicking. Click on the glue adjacent shelf tool, click your wall, hold down shift and click your ground plane and then hit enter. And uh, if you press play, you'll see by the little red icon down the bottom here, that there's a relationship when they're glued together, the floor and the wall. And this time the car hits as before, but the wall just stays rooted where it is and allows the car to pass through, throwing those bricks everywhere. This is pretty good, that's the desired effect that we're after. So um, the next thing to do is to make sure that this plays correctly. And in order to do that, you have to flip book. Um, flip booking will allow you to see things play back in real time. So I'm just going to tap you to come out of this network so we can see the shading. And over here on the left hand side of the interface is the flipbook button. If you just left click on that, the animation will play through and it will load up in M play. And then we can preview that and see how the animation plays out. And we can see there's a nice impact there. Now my bricks kind of float around in the air a little and I'd want them to have a bit more sense of weight. So one thing that's important when it's dealing with the simulations is first of all building to scale where one unit is one meter. But the other important thing is to make sure things weigh the correct amount. If you double click your auto dot network you can go inside. If you tap L it'll lay out your nodes. And if you come near the top here you'll see there's an RBD packed object node called wall. That is our wall. If you select it you'll find there's a physical tab where we can define the density. This is in kilograms per meter cubed and I'm going to put 2400 in. This will give them a higher density. 
Now I'm going to just flip up that again just to see if the uh, effect of the extra weight. Now as I mentioned this is in kilograms per meter cubed, it's a standard unit and um, you can look up those various densities quite easily in Google, so the density of steel would be 7000, um, easily found. But it will give your simulations the correct sense of weight and impact. So let me press play on this and see how that looks. That looks uh, slightly better. Now once you're happy with your result, the next thing about simulations is um, to cache them out and to save them. Now to do that you can click on this output tab at the bottom and you can write this cache to disk. This is very useful if you're rendering across multiple machines or you just want to save this version and then change the forces later. Very simply just click the save to disk button up here. This writes out your cache to disk and if you tap U to come out of that network on your auto dot network node click on playback simulation and this will play back that cache from disk. As you'll notice, I'm jumping to random frames and the cache is not, it's reading from, uh, it's not having to update. And you'll notice that the little blue bar has gone purple, just to show you that it's reading from disk now. And there we go. One last little test would be to look through the actual render camera and just flip that one last time to see how that looks. Then we can go on to the uh, rendering stage once we're happy with all of that. So let's just press play and see how that looks. There you go. I'm pleased with that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.